who died. There's 22 men died uh, standing up for what they believed in on that hill that day. Uh, the unusual proportion of the killed to the wounded is owing to the butchery of the military and troopers after the surrender. Now, that's a quote. I apologise. I should have had quote lines there. That's actually what Peter Layla said afterwards. So you can make your own mind up there. But it is unusual that there would be um, so many uh, death, so many dead, and uh, just uh, just that 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 amount injured. Usually, it's usually the other way around. It's usually more injured and lesser dead. But it does show that there was a fair bit of angry, angry soldiers on that hill that day. And it might just be worth having another look at that painting again just to get a sense of and what happened. Of course, we don't have any videos. We don't even have any photos of what happened. All we've got are artist images. Well, they eventually, uh, the government rounded up who was left and they, and they, had, they, had, a, they had a trial, guys. Uh, you know, these guys were charged with, with treason and fighting against the government and all sorts of all sorts of bad things you know, the punishment for which was death okay. the first trial started on the 22nd of February 1855 with defendants being brought before the court on charges of high treason the jury deliberated for about half an hour before returning a verdict and this is very important a verdict of not guilty right a sudden burst of applause, applause, right, arose in the court, reported the Argus, which was a newspaper at the time, but was instantly checked by court officers. So, guys, if we get a, 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 a verdict of not guilty, right, and uh, the crowd in the audience, uh, the, sorry, the crowd in the court is applauding, uh, that means a couple of things. Okay, it means firstly that uh, the diggers got off. They they didn't go to jail. They 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 weren't going to be punished or killed, and the fact that the 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 the, the crowd in the court applauded means that the crowd, the community, was with the diggers, and that's a very important point. The Australian community in general, the Victorian community, I should say, supported the diggers. They thought the troopers were unfair. They thought the government was unfair and the community supported the diggers. And largely, that's why they were found not guilty. I mean, uh, but they, they were probably guilty. They did fight against the government. It's illegal to fight against the government. But the court found them not guilty anyway, because the court felt that what the diggers doing was fair. And the community felt that as well. Now, you have to make up your own mind there. I'm certainly not advising that we all rebel against the government every time we think the government's not been fair, but... Sometimes that is what happens. I mean, if you just look in other countries of the world now, like Syria, for example, if you go home or you go over and pause this video and type in Syrian Syrian news, uh, S Y R I A, uh, they're in the middle of a, a rebellion right now. There's people fighting against their own government. Okay, this is our time where where we fought against our own government. And uh, most people tend to think we had good reasons to do so. Okay, Not the general public, but the diggers. The diggers fought against the government because they felt that they were being treated very, very, very poorly on the gold fields. Right, very, very soon after uh, the incident, uh, the Eureka Stockade, a report came out. A report commissioned by the government. I believe it was a royal commission. And the report made several major recommendations one of which was to restrict Chinese immigration, so that's interesting, because a lot of diggers were, were angry that there were so many Chinese coming in the country. You can make your own judgment about that. It sounds a wee bit racist to me. But moving on. Gold licenses, were, gold licenses were abolished and replaced by an annual miner's right and an export fee based on the value of the gold. So basically, instead of paying a flat amount every year that or every week or every month that the miners couldn't afford for a license, an ongoing renewal, miners would pay a much smaller amount, which, which they could afford, which was much better. And if they weren't finding gold, they mightn't have to pay any at all. Okay, mining wardens were replaced uh, by gold commissioners and police numbers were cut drastically on the gold field, so the, the miners were left to look after themselves a lot more and they were much happier about that. Here's the big one. Here's the big one, guys. If you fell or fallen asleep, wake up. Wake up now, thanks. The Legislative Council was expanded. Uh, legislative, legislative, this this word here means lawmaking, which means that 
Well, the Legislative Council was expanded to allow representation to the major gold fields, and Peter Layla, of all people, was elected for Ballarat. So he became a member of the government. So, so what I'm basically saying there, guys, is people were allowed to uh, be voted in for government. And this is more or less the first time this had happened in Australia. Okay, they they let people uh, vote for 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 who. Uh, they wanted to be in charge of them, as opposed to the Queen saying, he's in charge, or he's in charge. This is, this is democracy happening here. And uh, the, the, the gold fields were, represent, were, were, were recognised almost as, as, a, as, as almost little, little states in Australia, in the sense that they, 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 could, they could have a voice in government. And Peter Layla, uh, the leader of the Ballarat Reform League, right, and this, this character here, you, you'll remember Peter Layla, he was actually elected, and so he, he you know... Uh, he wants a rebel, wants a rebel fighting against the government, shooting guns at the government, um, was now a member of the government. And you'd be surprised how often that happens, actually. Okay, and there's, there's a bit of a happy ending. After 12 months, all the demands of the Ballarat Reform League, okay, now these are the guys who died on that hill, died on that hill, had been granted, okay? And Peter Layla, here he is, enjoyed a distinguished career as a politician, okay? He was later on elected as Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Victoria. That's quite a, quite a, uh, an honoured role. So, in a sense, the, the gentleman on Bakery Hill won. They won in every way. Uh, they, all, all their demands were met. I shouldn't have said they won in every way because they didn't win. Militarily, they were beat soundly. They were shot and killed. Uh, overrun, utterly overrun, but the public was with them and the courts were with them. And actually, when the report came out, it said that the government had acted terribly. So things changed in Australia after that. Right now, now we didn't really have a, a voting in Australia uh, until after, until after Bakery Hill, until after the Eureka Stockade, and and, and some suggest that the, the events of the Eureka Stockade set off a chain of, of other events that allowed for voting for for all, for all males. For all males, isn't that tough? We're just talking about voting for men right now. I mean, women got the vote later on, but, you know, the men got the vote in 1857. And so that meant that, uh, arguably, uh, the first hurdle was passed when when the the diggers got to have a say in how the gold fields were run and they were able to access uh, the legislative assembly, assembly. They were able to become part of government. And then that, that, that process continued and on... 1857, whether you're a digger or not, uh, a bill granting universal suffrage, you know, that just means voting, suffrage just means voting, see this word here, suffrage, just means voting, for white males was passed in Victorian Parliament, I mean anyone could vote, didn't have to be a digger, didn't have to be someone on the gold field, so, so what started on the gold field was, was voting and then that extended to the rest of us, it extended to the white males first and the white females and Aboriginals, uh, and all, now today, everyone in Australia can vote, uh, unless you're a child. And I tend to think that's probably that's probably one law we should keep the same. I think you need to be 18 before you need to vote. So that was a big deal, guys. I mean, it was the first time in Australia that that, that we were able to vote universal, universally. All, all 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 white men could vote. Of course, today, you know, arguably, arguably from that, everyone in Australia can vote. Uh, understand, Year Five. There are many countries on the planet. Uh, places in this world where you can't vote. So you think it's normal that mum and dad and Mr Burns go down to the ballot box and vote for Tony Abbott or Julia Gillard? That's because we live in a democratic nation. And people think that we live in a democratic nation because of what happened on that on that hill uh, so long ago. But there's many countries that they just don't get to vote. I'm going to talk about Syria again. They would love to vote. They don't get to vote. And that's why they're fighting their government right now. They're trying to get rid of their leader. The man who's just got all the tanks and the guns, they're trying to kick him out. It's, it's a terrible, terrible war. All over the world, guys, you've got countries where people don't get to vote. One person just rules over them with an iron fist or guns or tanks, but not in Australia. I better read this out. As a result of the democratic defect of the rebellion, some have therefore identified the Eureka Rebellion as the birth of Australian democracy or interpret it as a political revolt though its political significance is often disputed outside Victoria. It's up to you to think about how important was the Eureka Stockade. 
Thanks for listening, guys.